Good, no worries. Welcome to today's masterclass webinar um, from Australasian Supply Chain Institute. I'm Monique Fennec from Australasian Supply Chain Institute. And if you could please just raise your hand to let me know that you can hear me, please. Thanks so much. Great. And before we jump into today's presentation, I'll just alert you to in the chat box, there are already some um, URL links that you can uh, refer to. So um, they will give you the opportunity to jump into registrations for various things that are happening at ASCII. Um, so welcome everyone and let's get started. So there is a poll uh, in this webinar. It's mainly for ASCII's benefit to know um, how you're thinking and feeling about uh, attending our annual conference and also um, filling in our annual survey. Uh, so there'll be a QA and a um, afterwards and also in the LinkedIn group for the SNOP IBP special interest group. So please look at the chat box for the link to um, that special interest group for members only. And if you're not a member already, please join us. It's only $275 per annum, which is a, a great price for a year's worth of continued learning. Today's webinar is uh, worth one continued professional development point. And again, in the chat box is the link to the event listing on our website. Register there if you'd like to achieve that one CPD point towards your registration maintenance. So quickly an ASCII update before I introduce the keynote. Um, of course, our, um, our whole um, institute is based on, on two important elements. One is registration and the other is continued learning um, for the registration maintenance or continued learning as part of your ASCII membership. Um, so I just wanted to run through the key benefits of registration. Number one, through our public register, we now have 33 of our members listed as registrants on that public register. It's seen by industry media and employers. Just the other day, um, I had some media inquiring about who are experts in procurement and I sent them straight to the public register to talk to those experts uh, about a story they were writing. Public rec recognition for your career achievements. Now, it's important to note that there are four streams that you can register in and to be recognised for your career in that stream uh, is really important for you know, the work that you've done to date, both academically and also through your um, work history. There are exclusive roundtables with other re registrants. And if you are a registrant, please know that in, set, in uh, a couple of weeks time, about six weeks time, there is an executive round table uh, held in Sydney uh, around supply chain resilience for you. There's access to the ethics management program. So if there's a situation in your supply chain where there is some unethical behaviour that you've noted, of course, um, you, you would approach your um, direct report, but come to ASCII and have a confidential conversation with our ethics committee as well. They'll provide you with tools and resources to know how to take um, that matter further. And we're about to launch a new continued learning hub. So that's where all of these webinars um, will be available on one portal, um, allowing you to gain points in real time uh, via that one login link. Now on the continued learning update, of course, there's our conference in July, don't miss it. Um, there's a 10% discount for members. Um, the link is in the chat box. There's also a whole lot of new self-paced short courses in procurement from our partners Institute for Supply Management. It's on the short courses link under the continued learning tab on our website and all ASCII members get 10% discount on those. APEX classes commence in two weeks so if you've been meaning to sign up now's your chance. Um, email inquiries at ASCII.org.au for a quote. And lastly, masterclass webinars. There's more of these coming up, so please join them in May, June and July, and I'll get to those um, in the next couple of slides. So we'd like to welcome Craig Bennett as a registered practitioner in operations. Um, it's my pleasure to um, recognise Craig. He has 12 years of experience working in supply chain roles for global and domestic companies and has been recognised for his career and academic achievements with a bachelor degree in information technology, 
Master of Business Administration and Graduate Certificate in Logistics and Supply Chain Management. He resides in Queensland is, and is on our Queensland Chapter Committee. Congratulations, Craig, and this is the sort of recognition that you guys can get as well um, when you're successfully registered. So here are some of the upcoming webinars. This is the 19th of May link in the chat box for registration to learn more about um, collaborative workflow. Um, this is hosted by the Western Australia chapter and uh, is a great way to learn how workflow automation systems can be used. Next on the 16th of June, there's another masterclass for manufacturers keen to learn about some of the common challenges and ways to deal with those challenges. So that one's the 16th of June. And lastly, another masterclass on um, also hosting Oliver White um, on the uh, new product introduction and how IBP um, can assist in that process. So all those links are in the chat box and we hope that you'll join us um, over the coming Wednesdays throughout the next few months. The uh, supply chain conference that we're running is in July and I've just popped up there um, some information about the dates and the um, locations and I'll just pop a quick launch poll here to please just let us know if you're intending on coming to the conference and also are you planning on competing on completing our annual survey the state of supply chain management which is due in may so that'd be great if you could fill that in thank you very very much now without further ado i'd like to introduce mike reed to you all so um mike's managing partner of oliver white mike has been generous enough to share his 25 years of experience in strategy management product and portfolio management and integrated business planning with ascii over the years mike combines specialist expertise in strategy management um, his 25 years includes uh, working at leading organisations, including BP, Lubricants, General Mills, Revlon, Huntsman, One Steel, Case New Holland and Kraft, um, assisting them on their journey to business excellence. And today he's going to talk to us about a topic that we're all really keen to hear more. It's about integrated tactical planning. Um, so over to you, Mike, and thanks very much for joining us today. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Monique. And I guess, firstly, apologies. We had some technical problems and uh, Monique's now going to have to run the slides uh, from her end rather than me run them from my end. So if you hear me say change slide, please, or next slide or something like that, that's what's happening. So again, apologies for that. We, uh, uh, we thought we had everything right and then everything wasn't quite right, so as it turned out. So what are we going to go through uh, today? Firstly, uh, I guess uh, you know, a little bit about um, uh, Oliver White uh, ourselves. For those of you that don't know us too well, probably uh, a fair few of you do, but a few may not. So a little bit about us. Then I'm going to get into really the, the, the topic at hand, which is really all about integrated uh, tactical planning. Starting off with an overview, what is this thing about? So now, ITP is what we call it. Uh, really, we want to define what that really is. Then I'll drop down into the key elements of ITP. ITP really is about, as you'll find out, ensuring execution of the plans that we put together in IDP in the first place. So we have to consider the three streams of plans that we've got happening, a plan around how we're executing product portfolio, how we're executing our demand plan, how supply plan is being executed in alignment with all of those. Uh, and then finally, there's a piece about uh, financial integration. How does that work? because uh, we do need financial integration into the short-term process as well. Uh, whilst it's mostly about realigning those three core process plans, uh, it does need a financial element to it. From there, we'll drop into a discussion about the uh, weekly process itself. What does that look like? Uh, and uh, just a quick um, uh, couple of examples uh, where you know, some of our clients have found this thing to be very useful. So who's Oliver White? What are we about? So we're a a little over 50 years old now. And in fact, we're in our 52nd year uh, of, of business. We, we are all about uh, uh, really helping companies uh, drive their, their internal processes and get better integrated. 
everybody in Oliver White is a, you know, comes out of industry in the first place and was a leader in their own industry. You know, ran, uh, you know, parts of the operation in, in senior roles. Uh, we've put together uh, most of the stuff around uh, MRP2, SNOP. We pioneered demand planning. Uh, CPFA, you'll find the very first book on that was written by one of our guys. It's about cross industry. Uh, we're, uh, we've been into many, many industries of many types around the world. And uh, whenever we look, we are partnering with a third of the Fortune 500 companies. So that's a little bit about us. So ITP, first of all, why ITP? These are the thoughts of things that happen when we don't have a sound weekly and daily coordination process. There probably wouldn't be too many organizations around these days that don't have some sort of monthly planning process. Oddly enough, we do find a few, uh, but there's plenty that struggle uh, in that weekly and daily piece, co coordinating those monthly plans down at the weekly and daily level. So what do we see when that's happening? And you may see some of these in, in your organization. We see the executives always getting down into those tactical issues. So uh, we think about that as they're, they're really making decisions about two or three levels below their pay grade. You, know, so you say, why? Why is that necessary? We find that our monthly management business review, that executive SNOP meeting, is into the short term. So whereas um, IBP SNOP ought to be focused out sort of the, the four months plus out to 24 or even 36 months, we're now talking about next month. And, and in fact, it's not unusual to see conversations about what's happening uh, you know, this month and in the next few weeks in an MBR. Not a good place to be. We can't uh, say where we're going to end up at the end of the year with any confidence. You know, people find that plans are always changing on them. So it's, uh, you know, it's a case of uh, constantly running to try and keep up with what's going on. And the results are, you know, our customer service isn't so good. You know, costs and inventory are just rising and uh, purchasing and now ignoring the system and saying, this sending you bodgy signals. I can't, uh, I can't really work with that. And we find that you know, things like run rates for key resources are just not right, et cetera. And it really feels as though we're fighting a fire the whole time. So that's the environment in which ITP is absolutely essential. There's something wrong with that daily and weekly process. So what is ITP? ITP, first of all, is cross-functional. It's there to routinely realign and optimize those core process plans. So I mentioned them earlier. It's about the product plan, the demand plan, and the supply plan being effectively executed. And it's about ensuring that those are communicated when realignment is not possible. Uh, and it's typically weekly, and it's typically over a 13-week horizon. So why 13 weeks? Because that's typically the lead time in supply, and that's what we're trying to realign inside. It's looking at changes to plans. You know, consider that you know, we start life with a, with a decent 13-week plan. It's what's changed since last week that's really important. And it has to set up, as required, escalated decisions to senior levels. So this avoids senior people being down in the weeds all the time, but gives them the opportunity to get involved when the decisions are very large, and they sometimes are. So really what ITP is actually all about, it's about ensuring execution of our IBP process plans. It enables our senior management folk now to focus on that four to 24 month horizon. So it's actually about liberating the organization. So if you think about uh, I, IBP or SNIP is about that aggregate planning. Uh, IBP is about strategy deployment. That's where we want to, to live in our monthly process. But if we don't have a sound weekly daily connection, uh, then that's all going to fall over. And that's what ITP is all about. It's alignment of the monthly plan to what has been done weekly and daily. Thinking about the, you know, how organizations set themselves up, we think about planning and execution processes. So above everything here, we'd have a strategy. The integrated business planning piece of the puzzle is where we have an aggregate plan looking out to possibly out to 36 months. Many organizations are going there now. And it's focused beyond the fourth month. And it's into that strategic horizon. It's aligning upwards to the strategic plan. If you could just uh, press the uh, button there. Monique, we've got some builds on this one. So that's about the senior team. It is monthly. 
Thinking about integrated tactical planning, that's the weekly process. Just uh, press the button again, Monique. That involves our demand planners, our demand controllers, the supply planners and material planners. Just again, Monique. So what that's actually doing, or just so, sorry, back one there, Monique, we said we'd have a few technical difficulties, apologies for that. Uh, what that's actually doing now is that's joining the integrated business planning plan, the IBP plan, with the daily plans. So we're now able to connect effectively through the entire organization. So what we do daily in that scheduling piece is connected up to what we want to achieve weekly. And what we want to achieve weekly is connected up to what we had planned to achieve monthly in the first place, which is intended to deploy our strategy and achieve our business objectives. So ITP forms a very, very um, uh, important role in the organization of connecting the overall plans together, getting all those horizons sorted out and ensuring that we're able to keep alignment across those various horizons in an effective fashion. Thanks, Monique. So ITP is actually about that integrated execution of the plan. So thinking about, uh, we set up a variety of meetings throughout our organization so that there's different cadences running. We have a monthly cadence running, typically IBP, SNOP. We've got a weekly cadence running with ITP and that drops down to a daily cadence and there would be meetings there as well, typically stand up meetings in production, etc. So when we think about that weekly ITP agenda, again, we've got to think about we're focused on change here and we're focused on what is happening inside that zero to 13 weeks. 13 weeks mean typically the lead time for supply. So if, it's, if your lead time to supply is different to 13 weeks, then your ITP horizon is different. So don't forget that as well. So when you hear me talk about 13 weeks, it's the lead time to supply. If yours is eight weeks, then ITP covers eight weeks. If yours is 16 weeks, then ITP covers 16 weeks. So think about that as you're putting together your processes. Uh, what we're looking for is, you know, what is changing to our supply plan based on how we've executed and supplied previously, what's changing in demand and what's changing in product and what we need to get done to make sure that that IBP plan gets executed. So we are checking progress to the IBP plan and we're looking for where things need aligning such as we're going into a product launch. Well, that's now moved into the execution window and it needs to be managed. Uh, we need to make sure that actions and decisions and escalations are taken. Uh, we need to make sure that if we're seeing changes in demand that they are being assessed and where appropriate, they're being accommodated. And if they're not able to be accommodated, then we um, exercise into our demand control process. So really significant stuff here. Are we executing the plan that we put together on IVP? And if not, what has to change and what decisions need to be made to realign? Thanks, Monique. So ITP is about managing inside the time fence. So the time fence is that cumulative lead time to supply. So a very, very important piece of the puzzle here is defining that time fence in the first place. We've got those, those two critical zones that we need to understand outside the time fence. Our task is to ensure that supply is balanced to match demand. Okay, so the, the assumption there is that there are limited or no constraints and therefore we ought to be able to balance supply to demand. Not always true, but if it's not, uh, we've still got time to do things about it, make different decisions. And that's where our IBP process is engaging, you know, out beyond the time fence. Inside the time fence, we are now in the world of constraints. So our task here is to manage demand to match supply. So our ITP process is all about that, ensuring that demand now is matched to supply and making changes in demand if we need to, as well as possible changes that we can make in supply based on constraints that get worse and worse the closer we come to today. So we typically divide that zone inside the time fence into what people often call the firm zone where we only make emergency changes, we manage them very closely and the trading area, uh, where we, so we can make some change here, but any change in that area is a, is a balance between you know, one priority and another. 
And the decisions we're making inside that time fence need to be made on the basis of it is best for business and best for customer, as opposed to this just enables me to run my factory better. So really important that we get those decision points in place and that hierarchy of priorities, which says our decisions are made best for business, best for customer, which implies we've got to have cross-functional decision-making inside here. Thanks, Monique. So who's looking after this thing? We think about the concept, there's a weekly planning quorum and it is fundamental to success. Uh, as uh, most of you all know, running an IBP or an SNIP process requires a team of people to do that. And we often refer to those as the process leaders or facilitators. You can think about this group as being a similar group, but inside the time fence. Often, by the way, they are the same people. Okay, it depends on the size of the organization, but more often than not, uh, people that are involved in facilitating the IBP process are also involved in ITP. Uh, but we think about this as being a quorum of people who work together to make this thing happen. So if we think about how does that actually work, the, it starts, if you like, with that, well, we've got a demand manager or a demand execution manager, sometimes known as a demand control manager. Think about these, by the way, not as being individual people, they are roles. This is very dependent upon the size of the company because it could be that one person has a couple of roles. It could be that a single role is in fact a team of people. Uh, so that'll be heavily dependent on the, on the size of the company. But the fundamental part that the uh, demand manager or demand execution manager plays in the ITP quorum is ensuring that we understand and manage any requests for changes to demand. So we don't just simply change the forecast without understanding the impact. Uh, we don't accept new orders without understanding the impact. Thinking about the next part of that puzzle, and I guess opposite side of the, uh, of the quorum there, but uh, an essential part of the quorum is a supply planner. So the supply planner or supply scheduler has the responsibility for ensuring that the supply plans are put together in a cost-effective manner. So it's all about replanning of supply. So we often think that that those two in particular, the demand manager, demand control manager, supply planner scheduler, really need to be joined at the hip in this whole thing. But there are two other pieces of the puzzle that, uh, that form part of this quorum. The, we have to tap into the product management schedule as well. So that could be product project managers, it could be your, your product process leader. Uh, no matter what, we've got to get visibility of what's going on in product land as well, so that we know if we've got uh, you know, a stream of new products coming in, we've got rationalization exercises going on, that we understand where they hit into the near-term zone inside that 13 weeks, inside that time fence, the, the cumulative lead time, uh, and we are, again, managing change around that. So uh, project managers, product project managers, product facilitator, whoever it might be, is part of this quorum. And then the final uh, part of this quorum is the customer service or order entry uh, piece of the puzzle, which is very often the, the customer service supervisor or customer service manager, something like that. Uh, this person is, in, is there to ensure that whatever policy we come up with in terms of execution of demand, so things like allocations, etc., are properly managed out at the point of order entry. So an important part of the, the quorum, because they're going to ensure that we actually understand things like, well, where is abnormal demand happening? What are we doing to manage allocations? How are we ensuring all of that happens? So the quorum is four roles, not necessarily four people, could be uh, various teams of people, could be um, a person doing a couple of roles, whatever it is, sized for your business, but really critical to making this thing happen. So let's delve down a little bit now into our uh, core processes that we're trying to manage. So starting with the product piece. So the product piece, the plan, comes out of IBP in the first place uh, through the product management review. So that should tell us what we are doing to change our portfolio of products and services across the IBP horizon in support of companies' goals and objectives. And it will tell us how that changes from month to month. But bringing that into the execution zone now, we've got to think, well, in terms of ITP, what's going on here? 
So first of all, think about the, um, the, the product life cycle itself. So inside the, the product life cycle, we're, we're trying to minimize the number of obsolete items. We're trying to get rationalization effect, happening effectively. Those are hitting into the near term. We have to run our stage and gate process uh, which means that projects are moving through gates and are heading off for launch. We have to understand, you know, what's required in terms of things like product trials. You know, if, if we've got uh, trials about to hit our, our production lines, then they have to be scheduled in. Uh, the, the last thing we want to have happening is that a, a product trial gets uh, taken out of the schedule and jeopardizes a launch. So very important that we're up to speed with where projects are at when they hit into that 13 week zone and are impacting upon the demand and supply elements of the organization. We must plan our launches. So launches are definitely inside the 13 week piece. This is where everything has to come together to ensure a successful launch. So again, ITP has to monitor that. We have to mark, make sure that as we're heading into launch, as we go down the, 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 the track towards that uh, launch period, that master data is being created at the right time. Uh, so the last thing that we want to have happen here is that we're we're preparing for a launch, but uh, we have we don't have adequate master data there, so we can't order the materials. Uh, we've walked into companies where we find that uh, product management and, and new product uh, introduction is all conducted in a secret war room somewhere, and it's a big surprise to production when the thing actually happens. So we certainly don't want that going on. So a connection to ITP is essential. Uh, we need to think about. Uh, planning things like scenarios for when things go wrong. So what can go wrong with a product launch? Well, it could go it's extremely high or it could go extremely low. What are the scenarios around that? Uh, and we need to also do post-launch reviews. So again, that's a piece of the puzzle in terms of ITP. That's where we get the connection back to, well, what actually happened? So thinking about a couple of these things in particular, if you just flick on through there, um, uh, Monique. So, in the tactical portfolio management space, this is about managing the execution. So from a portfolio point of view, we're managing what's going in and what's going out. So those new product development pieces, we've got a launch plan to execute. Uh, we've got to monitor the post launch. So how's it going in the marketplace, that uptake uh, positioning, you know, are we finding ourselves expediting things? And we've got to manage end of life, which means that we've got to uh, pull the product out as necessary and manage the inventory out. So often those things get completely forgotten. They're, they're done at the side somewhere. We've, we've figured out during budget period, we've got way too much inventory of, of something. And uh, now we've got a, 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 a frantic uh, uh, inventory reduction program going on. Well, we need to do that routinely. We, we want to make sure that rationalization is in fact happening. So that happens through ITP. We make a plan and then we execute through ITP. We've got to make sure that our key resources and constraints in our tactical horizon, we keep an eye on those. Things like scheduling uh, pilot plants and, uh, and trials, etc. Pilot production car coordination, ensuring that the, the uh, product as it flows through the manufacturing site is properly qualified and uh, you know, feasibility trials are done, et cetera. So again, things that impact on the way that we run our supply side of the organization, you know, ma managing that launch, uh, the launch progress, the R&D elements of that, uh, and then ensuring that we're actually running our tactical product portfolio management, things like ABC analysis, and, and then driving improvement to the shape of our portfolio through the way that we uh, execute it tactically. Thanks, Monique. knowing where we are in that product life cycle is really important. So if we're in the introduction phase, ITP has got a significant uh, uh, part to play here because we need to know how the thing is ramping up. There'll be a forecast, of course, but in the introduction phase, we can find that there's significant variation to the forecast. So ITP keeps an eye on that. Is this thing ramping up as expected? Once we get into that decline stage, we've got similar problems. You know, what's going on here that we should actually now be considering, you know, it's time to move this thing on out. So managing that phase out of the old. So to make sure as, as new things come in, old things are going out and then taking those insights back into the product management review. So that is, again, grist for the mill as far as ITP is concerned. Thanks, Monique. 
So let's move to the uh, demand execution side. So we make our demand plan uh, through our IVP, SNIP process. Uh, so important things, things to think about as far as, you know, once we move into the ITP space is, well, who's gonna take on this role of demand execution manager? In smaller organizations, it's probably the demand manager does both. But larger organizations, it's actually quite common for a group of people to be looking at the longer term, that is the four months plus, and one or perhaps a team of people to be managing into the shorter term. So demand control manager or demand execution manager. Other things that we need to think about carefully here and ensure we cover off in our ITP design is how do we manage demand inside the time fence, which means we've got to define the, the time fence and put in place planning change control mechanisms. So we make sure that we don't just change our, our, our demand plans um, willy-nilly inside the time fence, causing all sorts of uh, problems into supply. We've also got to think about how does demand phase? In our demand plan, there, there's no phasing down to weeks or days. It needs to be phased down into weeks and days by the time it gets into the ITP space. Uh, inside that 13-week horizon, uh, we've got to know yeah, what, what do we expect to see in terms of actual demand by week and potentially by day so we can align our supply against that. When we think about the demand execution itself, uh, so now we've got, well, how are we managing order entry and promising? So we're making valid promises. Uh, so how's that happening? Allocation processes have to be in place. Uh, we have to be able to detect and manage abnormal demand. Uh, we have to have an available to promise uh, functionality. So how are we ensuring that our promises that we make to customers are valid? Uh, and finally, we have to ensure that we're actually monitoring demand and taking those insights back into our IBP process. And bottom line here is it's all about then managing and executing our sales activity plans effectively. Uh, and when things change, understanding the nature of that change and managing that change through ITP. Thanks, Monique. So really important element here that gets missed out by a lot of companies is this whole concept of, um, of abnormal demand. Uh, so we need to get a definition inside our organizations as to what constitutes abnormal demand. And then we have to have a procedure that states what the process is and how we will identify it and what we will do with abnormal demand if we're receiving it. Uh, it. It is often the case that it's first in best dressed. We get an order from, from somebody and we just say, well, that's wonderful. And we'll meet that order. And yet that order may never have even been part of a forecast, which means effectively what we're doing is that we're taking product from customers we had planned for and giving it to customers that we had not planned for. So that can be a very bad thing when it comes to managing relationships with those customers, even if that sale looked good in the first place. So major difficulty with, with um, you know, managing abnormal demand. Uh, there's a, uh, a video here, of the, if you'd like to just play that. Thanks, Monique. No, I'm getting no sound. Again, Mr. Daniels, Mr. Daniels, look at this. this. The numbers they keep getting bigger and bigger. Clicks are off the charts. Yeah, Yoshi, it's Walter. We're back. Yes, sir. I need four trees. Four trees. I'll get you more trees. Hey, take a look at Wood Pulp. Well, everything you got on Wood Pulp right now. He really loves that thing. So, just a little bit of humor in here. You know, that looks like abnormal demand. And yet we re the whole organization responded as though it was normal demand. So 
really being able to detect abnormal demand is really important for us. So a definition around abnormal demand, I mean, we've defined it as abnormal demand, any depart, any demand being received that's not part of the demand plan. A customer of mine had a much simpler definition of that, a sales guy, I guess he, he, he keeps things simple. He said, well, it's demand that we haven't planned for. Uh, really quite simple in his, his point of view. So getting that understood in the organization and then getting it managed is a key part of that demand execution in ITP. Thanks, Monique. Oops, keep going. <laughs> so we've really got to get this piece right. Monitoring demand, what do we actually know? So this is a simple representation of what might happen through the course of a month. So period here would be typically a week. Uh, so as we're going through a month, uh, and this, this applies inside our ITP horizon clearly, uh, Firstly, you know, in the early days, you say, well, do we actually know what it'll look like at the end of the month? Uh, we need data coming from somewhere. Uh, and we say, okay, well, does this actually look normal? So we're thinking about, the, does this meet our normal pattern of orders? If it doesn't, then it looks like something's going wrong and we may have to make a decision. If by the time we get to period two, uh, we're saying, well, oh, the variation is looking as though it's outside normal variation. Then we're really thinking about, well, uh, this is likely to be promoting a decision here. We're probably going to have to respond and it's going to depend on the size of that change. So we're likely to have some boundaries around this saying if the variation is outside certain limits, we're going to have to respond now. Uh, but we're going to have to understand what that is. We're going to have to have data that gives us that indication and tells us how demand is going versus how we had expected it to go. And so, you know, as we're getting further and further into the month, uh, we're, we're likely to start escalating decisions. And by the time we get to the end of the month, we then need to know, well, what's happening going on at from, from here? You know, the, again, ITP is, has a constantly rolling horizon of 13 weeks. So we've got to start thinking about, well, what's happening further out? If we're getting some changes now, does that have implications further out into the horizon. Uh, once we join back up with IBP, well, that can connect with uh, month four and onwards, but we have to manage inside that time fence, inside the cumulative lead time, of usually 13 weeks. Thanks, Monique. <laughs> so moving to the key issues that we have to consider on the supply side of ITP. So again, we've got a, a supply plan that came out of our integrated business planning SNIP process on a monthly basis. So the things that we're concerned about and we have to build into our design in ITP is first we need to understand what the scope of that actually is. Uh, so what supply are we managing into execution? So bearing in mind that we're really talking about the supply chain here and shortly we'll have a little bit more of a discussion about what that is. Some of our supply chains are pretty complicated. So our ITP process has to think about, well, if we're managing a supply chain and a complicated one, then we're gonna to have to connect to all the different points on that if we're looking for where we may need to manage change and where we'll need to manage execution. We need to set up that supply planner scheduler role. That's gotta join into this quorum. So who's gonna have that role within your organization becomes the question. We have to make sure we've effectively decoupled the demand and supply plan. Something again that sort of tends to get forgotten. We've got it effectively decoupled when we think about it in IBP. Uh, but then, you know, if we're not monitoring this uh, into the ITP space, changes in demand ripple straight through to changes in supply. So we have to effectively decouple that typically through a, a master supply schedule or master supply plan uh, that we, we carefully monitor, we construct uh, for the 13 week period, right down to day, et cetera, and we monitor against that. Uh, we have to understand and manage demonstrated capabilities. This is all about you know, uh, rough cut capacity planning in the near term. Uh, we have to have our master supply schedule in place and we have to understand the DRP, MPS down to MP, MRP logic. So we are managing a supply chain here. And we have to allow for feedback into our IP, IBP process. We're monitoring the assumptions that we had made into IBP in the first place 
and then feeding back into IBP when those assumptions appear to need to be updated based on what we're seeing in ITP. Thanks, Monique. So a couple of the uh, pieces of the puzzle that we can be thinking about in here. So if we think about the, the scope of this whole thing, so in IBP, we've got those three core processes of product and portfolio management, of demand management, and of supply. Uh, so dropping it down to that supply piece and starting to think tactically, uh, what we've got going on here is we've got a, a master supply schedule. Uh, so now we've got due dates, so typically set up uh, down to the day you know, when we actually expect to get something out, managed across that time zone up to that time fence. So that's the ITP zone. Uh, from there, we've got to go down into warehouse and logistics planning and scheduling. So they have to be connected. Uh, we've got to connect our uh, resource and capacity management and understand what our resource uh, capability is. So we apply rough cut capacity planning using demonstrated capability. We've got materials planning connected in there through MRP. So MRP being clearly connected to the master supply schedule in the first place, and we respond to that. So uh, changes in, in that master supply schedule will result in a change in MRP. So MRP would typically be run daily so that we can understand you know, what's going on in terms of uh, material consumption um, changes and, and requirements for, for any uh, expedited orders, et cetera. We've got suppliers to manage. Uh, and then there's other stuff that goes on in here too. All, all too often, we forget that we actually need plans in maintenance. So preventative maintenance, for example, that's going to hit into our ITP zone uh, where we, we want to plan out certain parts of our, uh, our production lines and do some preventative maintenance on it. So that's got to be in the schedule. Uh, so again, that's a piece of the puzzle in ensuring that these things are connected. Yeah, and what about our quality plans, et cetera? Uh, are we um, ensuring that, you know, if we do lots of quality testing on our lines, uh, uh, quite, quite a lot of pharmaceutical companies, for example, would do a lot of uh, quality testing. Well, that resource also has to be planned and managed into the short term. So it's really about integrating all those things together, ensuring effective communication and measuring, did we do what we said we, we would do? thinking about the supply chain overall. Each of the nodes of our supply chain has to be measured and managed. Thanks, Monique. So thinking through that supply chain, this would not be uncommon. A fairly complex supply chain uh, with uh, you know, a couple of production sites locally, and a third party production running offshore somewhere. All of that has to be managed through to achieving effective sales to customers. So we've got plans at each of these nodes in the supply chain. So if we're thinking about how do we ensure effective execution of the plans we have there, so we set up plans with, with uh, safety stock, truck movements, whatever it might be, you know, capacities planned and all the rest of it through our IBP SNIP process, so now it's going to be a question of now are those adequately scheduled now through to daily execution and are we measuring performance and understanding did we do what we said we were going to do and are we finding changes at any of those nodes that have to be managed and new decisions made in an integrated fashion. So the supply chain has to connect into ITP. It's not purely connect a supply point. Right? We're not just simply managing in this particular model, a single factory running in New South Wales. We're managing a network of stuff uh, that is intended to deliver effective sales to customers based on that original IBP plan. Uh, so all of that has to be put together and connected into ITP if we're gonna monitor into execution and make the decisions we need to make. Thanks, Monique. So that was the three core processes. Uh, joining those in is fundamental to making um, ITP happen in the first place. Uh, so you can see the relationship therefore between that quorum. So the quorum has the product piece, the demand piece and the supply piece, plus a connection through to customer service so that we're ensuring the effective execution of um, understanding abnormal demand and managing allocations, et cetera. But finance have got some ITP key responsibilities as well. So finance should be supporting this thing. 
Typically, we in an IBP process, we have finance tags into each of the uh, PMR, the demand review, the supply review, uh, and a roll up to uh, ensure that we've got uh, the uh, right information going through to the, to the management business review. In ITP now, uh, we, some companies do short term forecasting, well that can get information about ITP, uh, but really what we're looking for in terms of the, the ITP connection to finance is that finance is there to help us understand and make better decisions. Uh, so being, being able to make fairly rapid decisions is really rather important in the ITP process. Uh, and we need to have the financial ruler run across those. So typically uh, down in the ITP space, what we're looking for from, from finance is what's a um, approximately right model that allows us to make decisions when things are changing, we need to make a decision today. Okay, so we, we understand this, the nature of the change uh, and we're able to make a best for business, best of customer decision because we've got some sort of a ready reckoner uh, that we can use or a finance person that we can tap into pretty quickly. So to help us make that decision on that best for business, best for customer basis. So just flip down this builds a little bit here, um, Monique. So we want to make sure that all the, the various things we're doing here are, are effectively financially appraised using a approximately right rather than precisely wrong model. Uh, we they are evaluating the financial impact of any short term gap closure options that we may be coming up for, for example. So uh, if, if companies are really trying to now manage uh, a financial forecast in the short term and, and close gaps in the short term, then how are we doing that? Uh, we want to make sure that we're getting the results of ITP actions and, and decisions into our financial updates. And we want to make sure that whatever decision uh, we're making still in, enables us to achieve our financial goals. Thanks, Monique. So that brings us to really thinking about, well, what does this weekly cadence look like? So talked about the concept of, a, of an ITP a weekly ITP meeting. Well, that's got to be built up. There's a preparation, uh, a series of preparation steps that have to take place. We need to understand, first of all, what's happening in that in that product land of, of, of new product and introduction, uh, rationalization and so forth. What's, what's the update coming out of there regarding changes to the short term? Again, emphasize that this is about the short term and what has changed since last time we looked at this thing that is going to impact upon us. So from the demand side, we're looking at demand variance analysis. You know, where are actual demands not meeting forecast demands and what does that mean? So that demand variance analysis has to be an input. And the third input is, well, what about our supply side? How are we performing so far in supply and what is the impact of our performance looking forward? So bringing those things, three things together through our supply planning group, uh, looking to say, well, what does all that mean? What have we got to do inside that 13 week horizon with special emphasis typically on the next few weeks? Our master supply plan now, as we put it back together again, has got to consider capacity. It's got to consider inventory. It's got to consider, well, what's the impact on our suppliers, warehouse, et cetera. What scenarios do we need to consider? Because actually there's some uncertainty in this and what are the financial implications? So all of that takes place and we produce some sort of a, uh, a information pack, which we share and critique, get the information ready. So that by the time we get into our weekly ITP meeting, which is typically held something around a Thursday or so um, of, of the week, uh, we're now able to have that sensible discussion focused on what are the key issues uh, that are arising as a consequence of change in the short term and what do we need to make decisions about? You know, how are we going against weekly activities? You know, what is our, um, our supply plan that we're going to need to have for the next 13 weeks? And what's that going to do for us as an organization? And what decisions do we need to escalate? So that would be a typical weekly ITP meeting and after which we come out of the ITP meeting and clearly around the organization, there would need to be a communication of that. So, so what's the new plan? Who needs to know that? Uh, this will be part of our design. What's those output documents that come out from that weekly ITP meeting to the people that need to know uh, what's going on as a consequence. Thanks, Monique. 
So what have we gone through? There are 10 key components of ITP. One, we have to understand time fences. So we need to make decisions at the right time. So anything that changes inside our lead time to supply has to result in a decision because we have already changed something about the supply side uh, that is going likely to cost us money and we're going to have to make some sort of a compromise. We have to look at exceptions only. So it's about what are the solutions we need to deviations from the weekly plans that are really about executing the monthly plan. We have to get it down into weekly plans. So IBP plans are typically at the monthly level. As they cross over into the ITP space, they must be broken out into weekly plans and potentially even dailies. So they have to be tailored so that they actually now identify what is going to happen each week and potentially each day. We need the right behaviors in here. Uh, we wanna be focused on what counts. So understanding the ABC, if you like, you know, ABC, what's the most important uh, products? What are the most important customers? So now we can make best for business, best for customer decisions. It relies on key roles, that quorum of demand planner, supply planner, customer service and product portfolio management. It requires good data and plan. So we actually do need to use a system. Right? So our planning system has to be connected up, you know, understand supply, inventory and capacity. Weekly and daily phasing to ensure that supply is matched with demand daily, weekly. We have to monitor stuff, so measure. Did we do what we said we were going to do? So identifying the KPIs and the targets has to be anchored to the IBP plan. So identification of issues involved in delivering to the IBP plan. And it is about making decisions. So where those decisions could get made by the quorum, they're made by the quorum, where they need escalation and go to senior management, We've got a defined uh, set of decision criteria or an escalation process in place to make sure that the decisions get made in a timely fashion. So that's ITP, the 10 key components of it. Just moving on, uh, Monique. So what's that do? Here's some quotes from, uh, from customers that we've had who have implemented ITP. You can see, you know, the CEO installed a window the whole length of the office so management could see the inventory levels in the warehouse. When they started to cover the window, everyone would panic. Well, we don't even look at it anymore. Improvement in DIFOT is very typical. DIFOT really dipping below 97%. And we know why even beforehand, if it does, because we've seen the thing coming at us. Significant... Um, improvements in inventory value and in volume and DIFOT jumping to 97% or greater. And that's typically in the 12 weeks after starting ITP. ITP actually gets going fast and because it's a weekly cadence, we get results fast. Thanks, Monique. <laughs> and if you're looking for more information, brand new book out. Uh, some of you may have already uh, seen this. Integrated Tactical Planning, written by uh, several of my colleagues, Oliver White, two of whom are Australian-based, Rod Hozak and Stuart Harmon, both Australian-based. Uh, this is available from a whole lot of bookstores. Uh, we also have, uh, have copies of it, but you can certainly get it from these bookstores. Uh, both Rod and Stuart will be at the ASCII conference, uh, so if you want to meet up with them and perhaps uh, get your, your book signed, um, I'm sure they'll be only too happy to do that. Thanks, Monique. <laughs> Great, thank you, Mike, and thanks for bearing with us with a technical issue, guys. Um, Mike, there is a question for you, and I'm sure some just coming through at the moment. Um, VJ has asked if you can go through slide 23 again, so I'm just going to head back there um, while we're waiting for some more questions, please. So... twenty three. Here we are. This one, please. Uh, this one. Okay. Uh, so slide 23 is about understanding how demand is being consumed through the month. So really what we're, we're, we're looking at here, it is quite normal in IBP to forecast at, at monthly level and, and, and at um, aggregate level. So we don't need a heck of a lot of detail in IBP or SNIP out to our planning horizon but we do need the detail once we hit 
the 13 week period. We need to know forecast by line item. Um, we need to know um, how that phases across the weeks and potentially days. You know, usually not days, but in some organization, you know, da daily demand can be very important. So if you're in, in some parts of FNCG, for example, um, and uh, uh, you, you've, got, you've got promotions happening, uh, then they are likely to hit down at the daily level. Uh, so really what we want to understand here is how is the original IBP forecast, which was in more of an aggregate level and phased by months, coming down into a weekly or even a daily consumption. So this is what that's trying to tell us. So those, those periods up the top there would be weeks. What's happening by week? Do we know what that looks like as the month progresses? And is it consistent with the way the things should have broken out when we talk about breaking out that forecast inside the time fence? Great. And VJ, just um, give a thumbs up if that's a good um, response for your question. Another one here in the chat box from Scott Githens. He says to you, Mike, the process sounds almost like a monthly IBP done weekly with lower level people. Have I missed something and or is this a fair characterization? Um, I, I guess, Scott, and, and um, long time I see Scott, <laughs> hope you're well. Uh, it, it's sort of, but um, the difference is IBP is about setting the plan. ITP is about ensuring effective execution. But when you say, you know, the, the comparison with IBP is that we, we are still looking at three core plans of product, demand and supply, and we're joining those together again. So in that sense, absolutely, it's very similar to IBP. Great. Okay, another question here. Um, so VJ's come back. So you're also recommending to overlap the SKU line item between ABC inventory analysis and ABC sales analysis to have better understanding and by week as well? Yes, and focus on the A's. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, everyone, we've run out of time. Uh, if you have some more questions, we will post this recorded webinar into our SNOP IBP special interest group. And Mike, um, will you be okay to answer some extra questions there? Sure. Okay, great. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And uh, we'll see you at uh, the next Masterclass webinar. Thanks very much, Mike. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Monique.